before your very eyes. Because all over the country, armies trained in combat, skirmishing and cavalry charges will be reenacting some of those scenes that shape the course of history, all every bit as dramatic and ferocious as the real thing. of Pevensey Castle near Eastbourne, the Marcher Lords, who are one of English Heritage's top reenactment teams, are rehearsing part of the Battle of Agincourt. Now, by restaging battles as they really happened, they hope to make history much more exciting and interesting for audiences watching today. And while it may look like a 15th century free-for-all, when shields and swords, bows and arrows, and horses and men are involved, you really can't afford to take any risks. Jeffrey Davis, who organises all the reenactments, explained that every sequence has to be very carefully planned. The battles have to be realistic but safe, so their weapons and costumes are as close to the original as possible, but with important modifications. This is uh, all blunted off along this edge. Right. So it's got no cutting edge as a real one would have at all. So the sword is actually very much as it would have been, with the exception it has no cutting edge and it right. has a rounded off point. And if you look at the hands, you see that they cover great big hand protection. Yeah. What about the horse? The horse probably takes the most time of all, because you're asking a modern horse to do things today which it would never be expected to do. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of patience, very much like a police horse, except our horses have to do a lot more than police horses. Right, Jeff, I'm going to set a real challenge for you now. Could you train me to be an armoured knight? <laughs> well, you'll have to wear armour, you realise yeah. that. Oh... Do you feel some help with here? It's like being put into oh, a tin Sir. of beans or something. Are you comfortable? Oh, yes. All right. <laughs> oh, wait, what? And up, 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 up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you in? Yeah, just, ooh. Right. All right, Very now, <laughs> Paul can put this leg on for you. There he is. Good. And I'll come round and do <laughs> the other one. But it's enormous. My legs won't fill it. It's like getting put your legs put into stocks or something. Added thing out on that side. We'll do the same on the other side. It's like your entire body being in a straight jacket. Right? Yeah. Okay. Are you comfy? Oh. If we give you your sword, give you the big knight's sword, if you help me pull it out, then we will oh. go through some of the things you'll have to do so that you'll know what you have to do when you are out there in battle. All right? Well, now, which is your sword long. hand? Your right um, hand, your, your right well, hand. I right. I've never actually had to work it out before. <laughs> right. If you just put your arm out Ooh. and just wave the sword blade up and down in front of her eyes, and then just very, very... That's it, as you can see. Now, if I turn her face slightly towards you, you see she's not at all worried by the fact that she can see it. How do you train her to be like this? It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, constant practice and reassurance so that she eventually gets the confidence in whoever is riding her. People don't realize that underneath these beautiful heraldic trappers was armor as well. You can see it under there. All right. All right? And if I take the sword from you a minute, again, you can see that, that she's not at all worried. <laughs> right. Then Jeff brought in his crew to go through the short sequence of Sir Karen the Red Knight being dragged to the ground, move by gruesome move. And then Harry comes in on the other side to make it look like an attack from the back and brings the pole arm onto the back like that. Mm. All right, which is, is the cutting hurt? which is the cutting movement which pulls the knight down. Don't cut her hair off, Harry. Now you're going to do it. Uh, okay. All right, but with two things missing. First your shield. Don't you think I've got enough stuff here? No, you need your shield to protect your <laughs> side like that. There we go. I don't know what you're planning to do to me, Jeff, but hopefully we'll leave it. But I and now the helmet. If you bend down. Right. I hope oh. they haven't seen a thing. I it? know, that's what it was like. It's always a tight fit. There we are. And up you go. Can you see all right? I can't not see anything. How am I going to see to hit that person? You will when he arrives. You'll know he's there. So are you ready now? I suppose so. It's like sitting in a dustbin. <laughs> 
Thank you. Martial all stand by. And action. That's it. Good. Right, cut. Let's go. Right, let's cut. Let's get you up. Oh. Let's get you up. There you are. <laughs> you feel like a beached whale when you go. <laughs> are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, all right let's get you on your feet. Oh, oh. I don't... <laughs> I don't know why they rode on horses. It was a lot easier than walking. You have been to legs somewhere, haven't you? Come on, great <laughs> Give fire! But fighting baffles was very different after gunpowder was invented. Soldiers fighting in the American War of Independence 360 years after Agincourt used cannons and flintlock guns instead of bows and arrows. Fire! Fire! I joined Jeffrey's Dragoons training for a cavalry charge on a much smaller horse called Silver. Right, well what we've done, we've, we've done a single shot. Now we'll repeat exactly the same exercise, but we will do it like there are two shots at once, so going bang, bang. So your horse hasn't got more than a couple of seconds to get over one before another goes. Is this so, what it's going to be like in the actual charge? Oh, yes, it'll be a lot worse than that, because <laughs> it'll be going bang, 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 all over the place. Are you sure a couple wouldn't do? <laughs> I don't think a couple would do, because that's not what a battle would be like. Right. OK, let's go for it. Are you ready, Alan? Yeah. And second one. They're Ooh. both lit. Steady, Take steady, your reins steady, up, everybody. Steady. Good girl. Ooh. There you go. Oh, All right. Steady. It's good. It's good. It's good. What happens if the horse just hates it and can't get used to it? Then you wouldn't consider using that sort of horse. You'd completely take them away from it? Yes, it would. It would be unfair to the horse. And do you think all the horses here will cope OK? Is your horse looking particularly troubled? Um, nope. No? <laughs> um, no, they're all perfectly all right. They will react as a human being reacts, but they're all perfectly calm. I'm probably more troubled than she is. <laughs> Silver had been working with Jeffrey's Lloyd Banks for months now, and after my weeks of training, it was my turn to draw my sabre and hold my breath as I lined up with the British Light Dragoons for a full-scale cavalry charge against the cannon fire of the American militia. Cannon! Oh. Give fire! It was brilliant. Um, this horse was the one that did it because it was so good. It helped everybody shouting and all of that as well, but it was great. I'd do it again. <laughs> There'll be English heritage reenactments of historic battles all over the country this summer. So spare a thought for all that behind the scenes oh, work that makes them so realistic. Yeah. Oh. So please, I don't do these things. You are so you brave. Really well, it was worse than it looked. Which is so often the case. <laughs> well, I don't escape because Karen and I will be joining in the Battle of the American War of Independence, which is taking place at Audley Edge, at Audley End, at the end of August. And Blue Peter badge winners can see that battle totally free. And the English Heritage say that any badge winners can see any of the hundreds of battles that are taking place all over the British Isles throughout the summer free too. <laughs>